What's up, bitches? Daddy's home. <laughs> I woke up, took my pills, had a nice shower, quickly slipped on my uniform, ate a tasty breakfast, grabbed my bag, and headed off, as all per usual my, my daily routine. It was only after arriving in class that the normality of the day was thrown off. After taking my seat, I watched my classmates trickle into the room over the next hour until every empty seat was eventually taken other than Hanako's. The next hour. Ooh, Shizune looking crazy back there. I can never get used to the idea that she doesn't show up to class every now and again. Feels all the war worrying now as well, given that Lily's left. As Muto continues to drone on, I find my gaze flicking every so often over to her seat, as if she might appear there any moment now. Nobody else seems to care at all about her absence, but they have little reason to. Kaneko being absent from class, after all, is perfectly normal. Or at least it was. Her attendance hasn't all been that bad from what I've seen in my time here, but was apparently much more spotty beforehand. This is also an ominous time for her to be gone. It's the day before her birthday and my suspicions are starting to rise. After the breakdown she had in class when it was mentioned, an increasing amount of my thoughts is taken up not by now of how I can help her, but in the end, I feel like I can't do anything. The bell hurtling the beginning of lunchtime rings out, shaking me out of my thoughts. <clears throat> A collective sigh of relief can be heard from the class, though Muto looks quite put off. He dislikes being interrupted in the middle of his exciting lectures, after all. Just when I'm wondering what I should do on lunch break, given that Hanako and Lily aren't here, the solution presents itself. These two. Afternoon, Hee-chan. Hmm. Afternoon, Misha. Shizune. You both look bright as ever. Shichan hmm. wants to know if you'd like to have lunch with us today. Sure, it'll be good to have some company. Cafeteria hums with activity, much like my old schools did, but Yonku is different, though, and how strangely civilized the lunchtime rush is. What one expect to, what, what one would expect to an unruly mob chomping at the bit to get to the serving area is rather a neat and organized line. There's a small amount of jostling, and people's heads are often craning around to check on what's happening up ahead, but it's pretty subdued. This is due, no doubt, to the very serious rules regarding such matters in this school. The same strict discipline is observed when other students in the hallways are to and from their dormitories to the school gate. Yeah, nobody wants to kill each other. And they all know, because they're in similar situations, that they can kill each other. <laughs> very easy. While the reasons for it may be slightly off-putting, I've come to realize this is quite a sense of order that's... I've come to quite like this sense of order that's enforced in the school. It's not, I don't think it's force. I'm pretty sure everybody's very aware of their surrounding and doesn't want to kill somebody else. <clears throat> I didn't really like being told by Shizune and Misha to get their lunches, though. <laughs> I, feel a little used as, I feel a little used as I take a seat at the table where they're sitting, plunking their food down in front of them. Sweet bread and strawberry milk for Misha, bowl of ramen and juice for Shizune. I heave a, quiet, I heave a sigh of relief as I put it all down after the significant difficulty I had carrying in in addition to my own lunch. Thank you. Misha claps her hands together before popping open the wrapper and digging into her bread ravenously. Shizune simply gives an appreciative nod before giving her steaming ramen a stir and blowing up the, a little to cool it down. I open my own lunch, another packet of sweet bread, take a bite before washing it down with some juice. The bread is very sweet, so, so much so, that I end up forcing myself to stomach it just to get the experience over with. Jeez. Midway through, I decide to take a break from the difficult task and ask what's on my mind. So, I'm guessing you two had a reason to drag me down here? You two seem to always have an ulterior motive, after all. What are you saying, what are you saying, I don't have for our motive. Her mouth is full of sweet bread as she speaks. It's a pretty unpleasant sight. <laughs> Shizune looks a little grossed out before getting back to eating her ramen. I don't want to say it. <laughs> I was going to say, like, isn't Shizune, like, eating with utensils, like, eating, like, talking with her mouth full because it's her hands? If she tries to, like, sign stuff, but with her hand, it's funny. Anyway, I wait until Misha swallows what she has in her mouth before speaking again. You're not buttering me up to make me work with you after school? Nope. Not trying to extract information from me that I might not want to give? Nuh-uh. 
Fine, you win. I guess you just wanted to eat lunch with someone as intelligent and handsome as me, then. That's it, Hee-chan. You got it. Jizene looks unimpressed as Misha finishes signing our conversation, and it sucks at the last long noodle she signs in her own thoughts. Shichan says you shouldn't be so suspicious of us. She's just doing her duty as a class representative is all. What duty? How is she, uh, are you doing that? As much as I hate to admit it, it looks as if I still have some trouble communicating with Shizune. It should be a simple matter of keeping eye contact with her and addressing Shizune instead of Misha in my speech, but when somebody else is doing the talking for her, it's a suspicious, surprisingly difficult task. It's the class representative's job to ensure everybody is doing all right in class, isn't it? Not really. Wait, how is me getting your food ensuring that I'll go well in class? She's in a huffs and adjusts her glasses disapprovingly. Hmm, she noticed we were looking at her, her as seat. So, this is the thanks we get for giving you companionship during lunchtime? I could have gone off with Emmy and Rin. I know where they eat lunch, bitch. There's a total dodge of the question. Wait, hang on. How did you know that I... Lily's away, and Hanako is absent, since those two things are the only people- Sorry, I said things, <laughs> since those are the only two people you hang around with. I also like Rin and Shizuna- or Rin and, uh, Emmy. You also made it kind of obvious to see. Ouch, I may well have done so, but she didn't need to rub it in. This is payback for before. Right, well, thanks. I appreciate it, and that isn't sargasm. The two nod, and we get back to finishing our meals. It was a little embarrassing to be accompanied just because they noticed I was lonely. But it isn't as if they're strangers, either. It isn't long before I finish the last of my bread and start with the last of my juice. And as I do so, I find my mind wandering back to what I'd been thinking about before the two interrupted my train of thought. It feels like I'm the only one in class that so much as acknowledges Hanako not being there. I felt this, like this other time she had skipped class, but now it's even more acutely annoying. Does nobody care if she's happy or not? No. Why do you care about, like, fucking that one girl with one hand? You don't think about her every day. Because you don't know her. You've seen her. You've maybe had a sentence. But you don't think about her. You haven't brought You haven't even brought up Emmy and Rin, bro. They're your actual friends. Fuck you. You don't wonder if they're happy. Have they just written off any possibility of helping to make her better? Again... Everybody has their own lives, their own friends. They're not caring about Hanako. Even Muto doesn't try to keep her in class. I'm still not wholly convinced by his reasoning. He just wants to keep her comfortable, bro. Give her some space. <clears throat> hey, he chan is you just past the expiration date? What? You were putting on a weird face, like this. <laughs> As if it were needed, Misha mimics my own expression. Her exaggeration makes me grimace. Though Shizune at least takes some amusement from it. I was just thinking about Hanako. Oh? Misha's interest is piqued, and so is Shizune's. <laughs> Once my words are interrupt interpreted for her. <sighs> I'm just worried about her being absent so often. Especially now, with what her birthday coming around. They don't know her birthday is a traumatic experience for her. Oh god, Shizune's sad. The memories of that incident in class are still fresh in their minds. Oh, I guess they do know now. Their faces alone are telling that much. Do you know anything about Hanako? Anything that might help? Misha shrugs and looks to Shizune, who mulls on this for a while. The only people she's ever talked to for more than a sentence or, or two are you and Lily. Shizune may not be able to convey Lily's name in a... Derisive? I don't know what that means. <clears throat> Tone of speech, but I feel as if it comes through in her sign language. The effect is lost, however, after Misha's interpretation. There are a couple of things that we know about Hanako as the student council members, thanks to the records of the past through our hands, but we can't say anything about what's in them. Understandable. It sounds a lot like the nurse's patient confidentiality. Every time I find someone that knows something about Hanako's past, it turns out being a dead end. The only way I'll ever find out is about asking her, or joining the student council. <laughs> I don't know if she'll let me know such things, but for her sake, I have to at least try. Don't worry about it, Chan. It happens every year, after all. That doesn't remove my sense of worry at all. I still feel a little at fault for what happened in class, but this feels like it goes further, even without their confirmation of the fact. <clears throat> Misha notes my troubled expression, her own usually happy and reassuring face dropping. Everyone has problems to deal with, right, Chan? Yeah, I just wish I could help Hanako more with hers. 
With that, the conversation trails off on a depressing note. <laughs> Eventually, Misha manages to pick the mood back up through her usual bright and bubbly antics, but my mind remains focused on Hanako. I'll go check on her later. I make sure my door is locked after dropping off my school bag. The dorms are quiet. Muto kept me a company occupied longer than I expected. Discussing my studies after classes ended up pressing me on some worksheets to give to Hanako almost an as an afterthought. I don't know if I said that right. After classes ended and pressing on me some worksheets to give to Hanako almost as an afterthought. Absorbed in thought, I'm late in registering the shadow that appears in front of me. Looking up reveals the owner of said shadow. Kenji. Hey man, haven't seen you in a while. Oh, hi. What's with that response? <laughs> My absent-minded greeting visibly annoys him. I probably had the same reaction. Sorry, I was just thinking about a lot of stuff. Thinking is a pretty poor excuse by not aiding the war effort. How goes the war? I'm preparing. Right now, I need money to help with those preparations. If you want me to loan you money, just say it. No, man, I'm good. You're good? You don't want my money? Hey, man, don't look so surprised. It's insulting. I'm pretty big in competitive bowling scene, but yesterday, I found some guys who didn't know that. I'm fairly sure that betting would be against the school rules. School rules don't matter. This is a war of situation. People these days, they don't have appreciation for what it means. How do you bowl when you're half blind? That's crazy. I'm sure it's, I'm sure, I'm almost certain I remember hearing like the best bowlers like was a, was a blind guy, actually. Do I remember that? That seems like a weird fact that I remember. Maybe it was like in a local scene. There was a blind guy who was really good. I don't know. So what do you need this money for, dare I ask? Non-perishable canned food, building materials, most cr uh, mostly corrugated iron and wood panels, first aid kit, camping heater, portable radio, sleeping bag, flashlight, mechanical clock. At first it strikes me as a rather random assortment of objects and materials. But after a few seconds it clicks. He's just going for like a camping trip. Oh, <laughs> isn't that a list of materials for a fallout shelter? Ah, so you've read Protect and Survive booklet. <clears throat> it's good to see someone who's knowledgeable about to protect themselves. You don't seriously think... It's a non-zero possibility. No, I'm pretty sure there's a zero possibility of that ever happening. He slowly and dramatically raises an eyebrow. As dramatically as one can raise an eyebrow. The chance is, I don't know, 0 0.1 to the trillionth place. It's infin infinitesimal? In infinitesimal? I know, infinitesimal. Infinitesimal, there we go. <laughs> Besides, where can you build a fallout shelter anyway? Certainly not on campus. It's my summer holiday project while I'm at home. My dad said I could do it. Really? Yeah, he thought it'd improve my, pra my crafting skills and manual dexterity or something. Knowing Kenji, his dad probably just thought it might keep him out of his hair for a little while. Still, it doesn't make me wonder what his parents are like. Maybe they're totally normal and Kenji is just an aberration. On the other hand, maybe this is kind of paranoia and fearful survivalism uh, runs in the family. Hey, wanna help me build it? You look like the type to be handy with tools. If I had your help, we can make a really badass bunker instead of just a fallout shelter. I doubt that. Playing soccer before my accident gave me good footwork, but I've never really tried my hand at anything approaching real handiwork. You're recording. I'm recording. <laughs> I'm not really. I'm busy over the holidays anyway, I'm afraid. A shame. Feminists ever got a hold of the launch codes? I fear that so few will be prepared. And your fallout shelter will protect you from a nuclear bomb explosion in the case that does happen. A fallout shelter isn't meant to protect against blast. That's what a blast shelter is for. I thought you knew better. My mistake. My home's pretty far away from the major military sites, so fallout following nuclear exchange is a big concern to the blast itself. What this will do is keep the dust and other particles away from me. My food supply, my sleeping area, it's gonna last me at least 14 days though. 14 days is a pretty long time. It is. I need one liter of water a day for drinking, two, optimally so, that I can wash as well. Toiletry is easy enough, just garbage bags and a bin placed out the shelter area. Food means can supplies, of course. Of course, and the radio is for outside communication. Right, right, so I can pick up government alerts on what's happening on the outside. I need a mechanical clock rather than an electric one in case the electromagnetic pulse from a nuclear air burst fries it too. There's all the other stuff I need as well, like extra clothing, matches, and candles, and I still have time to gather it, though, maybe. As much as I hate to say it, I'm a little impressed. He's really researched this and thought it through. Then again, I don't know if I want to live in a post-apocalyptic world with only people like Kenji having survived. It sounds like you really know what you're doing. 
damn right I do. Must be hard living in constant fear like this. He hardly ever socializes either, so the fact that he went bowling with others in itself is something of a surprise. This mentality reminds me a little of a certain someone. Thankfully, her fear of others doesn't manifest in such a distinctively eccentric way. One thing I know for sure is that I certainly can't tell him exactly why I haven't been hanging around with him so much recently. It's late. I have stuff to do. I think I'll be making a fallout shelter or something. I'll, I'll think about making a fallout shelter or something, though. Yeah, alright. That's cool. Man has to do what he's gotta do, after all. You should hang around with me sometime, by the way. You're a cool dude. Cool dude just hang out together, right? For some reason, that compliment actually feels kinda nice. <laughs> Situation with Hanako being what it is, though, means I probably won't be able to fulfill his request. For now, at least. That'd be good. I'll talk to you later about it when I can. Cool. Later, dude. He retreats to his dormitory room. I had best go see Hanako. <clears throat> I stand outside the door to Hanako's room, hoping that she isn't in too much of a state as I nervously clutch the worksheets Muto asked me to pass on to her. It's one more reason to visit her, and it gives me something to talk about, so I suppose I should be thankful for him giving me the task. With a long breath, I steady myself, and I wrap my knuckles on the door in front of me. Silence. I listen intently for any sound of shuffling coming from the inside, but I can't hear a thing. God, I knock on the door again, slightly harder. Still no answer. How strange. Scratching my head, I make one last attempt at getting her to answer as I knock on the door one final time. Hanago, it's just me. Wuto said to give you some stuff. For a while, the attempt seems as unsuccessful as the last. Just before I slip the sheets under her door, though, I hear a handle rattling. Oh, hey. As the door opens halfway, I quickly try to see how Hanako's faring. It's a task made somewhat more difficult by her oversized gown hiding so much of her body. She doesn't look sick, or at least doesn't Im look not immediately so. To be honest, I'd have preferred that expression of hers right now. What? Oh. She looks terribly tired, and appears to be barely acknowledging my presence. Hi, Hanako. Muto wanted me to give you these since you weren't in class today. I hold out the loose sheets, which she tentatively takes in her hands, the way she moves in devoid of thought. Her posture is slumped in an unusual manner for someone that's so often tense and wound up. Even her eyes keep looking away from mine. Doing their best to try to avoid eye contact, I move my head a little to try to get a better look, just as she ends up turning away. Are you... okay? If you're feeling sick or anything, I can go get a nurse. It feels almost pitiful to put on such a routine and get well soon act. I can't even think of anything else I could possibly do for her, though. She seems to collect herself a little at the notion, but only a little. Her head remains turned away, but her eyes move towards me. I'm fine. An awkward silence follows. As it lingers, I notice that the sleeves and cuffs of her gown bearing damp stains. Her cheeks are a bit red, too. Has she been crying? I see. I hesitate a little before coming out with the words I really came here to say. Would you like me to stay? I don't have anything urgent to do at the moment, and it wouldn't be any trouble. Her eyes slide away from me. As I lose any hope for an improvement of her mood, I wait just for a response. But she doesn't say anything, nor gives me any kind of gesture. She just stands there, looking away from me. Hanako? She slowly shakes her head. Okay. Um... Good night, then. With that, Hanako steps back and closes the door without a second word. More than a little worried, I retreat back to my room. Wandering up the hallway, I keep mulling over what happened. It felt like Hanako was only half there, as if I was interacting with a robot that was just doing what it was programmed to do without any real thought. She was a husk of a person. <sighs> this is frustrating. I'd only hoped that meeting Hanako would help the situation, but I feel like it's only made it harder to understand her. How am I supposed to try and help her when she's quite literally shuts me out like that? I don't even bother to turn on the light, opting instead to just simply change into my pajamas, quickly choke down my evening pills, and collapse onto my bed. That's right, Asel. Go ahead and print another one, boys. <clears throat> well, we ran out of coffee, so now we're drinking water like we're supposed to. Responsible. <clears throat> Once again, Hanako doesn't turn up for class. It's her birthday day, right? I think. 
Try as I might to concentrate on other matters, the fact continues to distract me throughout the entire school day. And even as I walk through the school gardens to the dormitories, also, I didn't mention it, but I, I think these, this camera is going to be better because the batteries aren't going to die as fast, but I think the battery's about to die. Just saying. But that was a big thing that I really wanted is that I didn't want to have to replace batteries every time. Because it's like a weird hassle. Not really, but whatever. But anyway. I don't think that today being her birthday is a coincidence either. I don't think that link between the two events though, nor do I have any idea what she's feeling. Were it physical pain, at least I provide some limited comfort. With something like this though, I have no idea where to start. Maybe giving her space? <laughs> Maybe just letting her rule her stuff out? Maybe? I don't know. I run the people I know through my head, thinking about <clears throat> whether they could be helped. Shizune and Misha don't know that much about what happened to Hanako. What little they do know, they can't tell me. Same for the nurse. In the end, there's only one person who knows Hanako well and be willing to tell me anything. Hanako, right? Entering my dormitory room, I notice something that takes me off guard. It's starting to feel familiar. With everything that's going on around me, I'm thankful that this room started to finally be somewhere I can relax a little. When I first entered Yamaku, I felt immediately foreign in every way, from the untouched neatness to the way it smelled. Focusing back on the task at hand, I throw my bag onto the bed as I open the top drawer of my desk. Before she left, Lily told me the number to call her. Okay, Lily. I, I, I thought Lily in my mind, but I was like, you have to call her all the way in Scotland? That's kind of annoying. Plus, her family's going through something right now. <laughs> Whatever. Lily told me the number to call on her when in Scotland, and I wrote it down. In hindsight, what if she knew something like this could happen? Of course she knew something like this was going to happen. It was her birthday. Now that she's out of reach, I just realized how much both Hanako and I relied on her guidance. I dig around the drawer after drawer, looking for it, that damned piece of paper. Eventually, thankfully, find it nestled into a burrowed library book. Probably should have just entered it directly into my cell phone, but come to think of it, without further ado, I entered the numbers and anxiously pressed the call button. Eventually, the phone picks up. A feminine voice I don't recognize on the other end. It's probably Lily's mother. Sato, I'm assuming it's like something named Sato Residence. English. <laughs> Ugh. English. <laughs> Suddenly, finding myself unprepared, I didn't realize I couldn't understand a word, she says, either due to my limited vocabulary or her heavy accent. I should have anticipated this, since according to Lily, her mother is a native Scot. I soldier on in hopes that she must know some Japanese, considering it's her daughter's native language. Um, it's Hisao Nakai speaking, but in Japanese. An enthusiastic sound of realization can be heard as she recognizes the language. My feeling of relief is immense. Ah, you must have been one of Lily's friends from school. <laughs> Even so, her accent means I have to concentrate to work out what she's saying. Yeah, that's right. Pleased to speak to you, Mr. Toe. It's so nice of her to find someone so polite. Lily, dear, it's for you. <laughs> her mother seems quite nice. So uh, really over enthusiastic given the mundane situation. There's a small silence as Lily takes her time getting to the phone. In the distance, I can make out her mother scolding her playfully, just to getting up. Hello, Lily speaking. You sound awful. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> she makes a sound somewhere between a dying animal and a yawn. The one thing I did remember to check before calling was the time zone. It'd be pretty late in the morning over there, so she really has no excuse. Not feeling well? Just tired. What time is it there? Late afternoon. School finished for the day not long ago. Hanako's not well, is she? That was quick. <laughs> My assumption must be that she must have known something like this could happen and been on the mark. How did you know? It's her birthday. What the fuck? <laughs> I'd hoped something. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> today is her birthday. I hoped she had gotten at least a little better after coming to you, but... How is she right now? She missed school yesterday and today. I still have to check up on her today. To be honest, after seeing how she was when I walked, talked to her yesterday, I'm pretty anxious. I really have no idea what to make of it. Has this happened in the past? Is it related to her scarring in some way? Unfortunately so. Roughly the same thing happened last year when her birthday came up. As far as I can tell, it's because her parents died in the accident that caused her scarring. Hanako blames herself for their deaths. What she says does seem to make sense. She's blaming herself on her birthday. She may not be ruining the day she was ever born. Hanako had mentioned her stay in the orphanage to me. Maybe I should take some heart that she trusts me enough to tell me such a thing. 
Yes, 100%, yes. Lily seeming so in the dark about it, though, almost to an extent that I am, is a surprise. So that's why she lives in the student dormitories as well? Has she told you any more about the accident? As close as we've come, she's barely told me anything about what's happened. What I know is it's largely conjecture. She sounds depressed. <clears throat> almost defeated, <laughs> considering the trauma Hanako must have gone through. I really can't fault Lily for not knowing. Nevertheless, she still seems to consider it a personal failing. Don't blame yourself, Lily. With everything she's gone through... Still a long silence from the other line. I begin to wonder if the call cut out before the voice at the other end starts speaking once again. There is another person, though, that has been a subject of worry for me as of late. Oh? Like, what, her therapist? Or something? <laughs> I run through the people she could be talking about in my head. The only friend she keeps very close to Hanako and me, though there is Akira as well. The person is you, Hisao. There's another silence on the line, but this time it's caused by me. Making others worry about me is something I very actively try to avoid. Let me try that again. <laughs> Making others worry about me is something I've actively tried to avoid since coming to Yamaku. Indeed, even my interaction with Hanako has helped stave off any major health problems thanks to our related and slow-paced lives. Uh, huh. What is there to worry about over me? She was worried about Iwanako, dumbass. The fuck you mean? She was worried about Iwanako. She's worried about your health. She's worried about you. I apologize. I didn't mean any offense. Sorry, I was taken a bit off guard. Still, isn't Hanako a bigger problem at the moment? Well, she, I don't think she thinks about you. Or she doesn't think about her own problems as much. She does, you know, she hardly communicates it. But <clears throat> she's just worried about, like, her friends and stuff, bro. <clears throat> For some time now, I've thought that both of you may be feeding into each other's more worrying habits. I tried to amend this before leaving, but it seems to have done little. Worrying habits? When I asked you about what you had in mind for the future, your answer was very similar to what Hanako had said in the past when that question was posed to her. It is well and good to want to protect her, but I fear that treating Hanako like this, as if she were a daughter or someone in need of special care, is only going to achieve the opposite. The situation got effectively turned on its head. After everything that's happened, this is the first time I find myself doubting Lily's judgment. 100% you have to agree with Lily. Like, you, die, you if you both have, like, the same problem, there is no solution for that problem. Because neither of you have the solution. But if it was, like, a problem, like, oh, I have this thing, but your friend has been, like doesn't have that thing, you, like, you communicate that easier. Okay, I'm just going to agree with Lily. I don't want to admit it, but she may have a point. Something else bugs me, though. And you tried to amend this? Wait, our outing into the city? Quite astute. I thought that it might help if I dragged you out of Yamaku and into a wider world. I'm thankful you became closer for it, though. She So she noticed that. She's fucking god, bro. She's so good at this. <laughs> I suppose she may as well have been paying attention to us, and her, he her hearing's incredibly good. Quite likely good enough to have picked up what we were talking about, if she tried. Mm, this sounds more and more like you were manipulating us. Silence. <laughs> yeah, but it's for a positive thing, Hisao. You can't be like, you were manipulating us. It's like, no. She was kind of leading you along, like the children you are. But I have no intention of stepping back from those words. I'm sorry. I was just worried about you. It's fine. I guess there are more important things anyway. Don't ask like it was a bad thing. She's trying to help you. It's not a total surprise that she'd do such a thing. Her motherly nature can be slightly overbearing at times. Why are you going against her like this? But she does have the best of intentions. <laughs> so you think I should think about myself instead of trying to cater to Hanako? That largely sums it up. Again, I'm not sorry for not telling you this in a clearer way before going back behind your back. I know that I'm at least guilty as being overprotective of Hanako as you. But I fear that you are neglecting yourself in your efforts to give Hanako's happiness. In your efforts to give Hanako happiness. Do you really think Hanako will be okay? She isn't as fragile as you think. I don't know exactly what experiences she's lived through, or what feelings she has in her mind, but she has managed to work her way through them until now. It's also my hope that giving her a little space will allow her to decide what she truly wants for herself, and give her the initiative to reach out for it. Please have faith in Hanako. That's all I ask. I'll, uh, I guess I'll think about it for a while. That's good. Being rash won't get you anywhere. I know that, at times, you may doubt your relationship to Hanako. 
but she does. Lily cuts off and takes a moment to reconsider her word. Please keep in mind that I wouldn't have befriended you if I hadn't thought you a fundamentally good person. You're a good friend, both to myself and to Hanako. Thank you. That helps. We share some small talk to try and lighten the atmosphere, but it feels very stilted. There's a lot I don't know about Lily's stay in Scotland, but after such a heavy subject, I don't want to be alone. <clears throat> I want to be alone for a bit to think. After a few minutes, we end up saying our goodbyes, and I set my phone on the desk. Compared to Hanako's situation, mine feels utterly mundane. I still have to. I still have both of my parents. I had a reasonably normal childhood, and unlike many in Yamaku, my condition isn't immediately visible to the public. But then again, isn't this just an attempt to justify the way I've been acting towards her? That may well be what our pasts were like, but when it comes to the future, I still have no idea what I want to do. In school, I've just considered concentrated on each day's work. I've put off more and more things to cater to Hanako. I recall the words Muto told me after Hanako's breakdown about the purpose of Yamaku and my education. In hindsight, he was probably trying to push exactly the same thing. Just what I've been doing in the time of since my what have I been doing in, since the time of my heart attack? If I managed. If I ever did manage to get Hanako out of her room and open up, what then? I look out my dormitory window, and the sun slowly sets. It's a nice sight, but I really savor is the quiet. What? But what I really savor is the quiet as the students return to their dormitory rooms. <sighs> All I want to do now is think. I'm not sure how much time I have, but I want to work out where I'll go from here. That's good. I like that. Huh? That's how. We got one more in us, baby. One more day. Let's go. This is a heavy-ass episode. <laughs> since talking to Lily yesterday, I've wanted to try to move on from the listlessness I have felt since coming to Yamaku. I clicked. The game broke. Okay. Oh, I was off screen. But even if I try to concentrate from the book in front of me, Hanako's empty seat at the back of the classroom looms larger than life. Every time I start getting focused, my eyes flick over to her desk again. My mind starts splinting. Oh, she is in our class. That's right. We saw her in the beginning on the, the thing, right? Once more, my eyes shift over to it, but this time my vision is blocked by a certain other classmate. Oh, hey, Miki. Maybe you should just have lunch. I can hear your stomach growling from my desk. <laughs> I let my head drop in disappointment. She seems to take some amusement from my reaction and hops up onto my desk. <laughs> her grin she sits, reminds me of the Cheshire Cat. So, what you working on? It's a math. I have a decent handle on it, but I just wanted to revise. Really? Let me see that. Before I can object, she grabs my mathematics book with her hand. She scans the page I was on, holding it open with one hand, as she has, and her left arm sitting uselessly on her lap. In my time here at Yamaku, I've noticed that the other students have a wide range of adjustment to their disabilities on a purely practical level. Miki is one of those who seem to have some trouble. The stump of her left arm tends to either be hanging on her side, slipped into a pocket, or otherwise put out of the way. Sometimes she has a difficult time of doing common tasks, which makes her visibly quite frustrated. Just learn how to use your feet like Rin. Then you'll have three arms. I feel a little bad for thinking this way, but I'm thankful that Hanako and I don't have disabilities affecting our freedom of movement to that extent. Then again, if Miki's problem worsened, at least she wouldn't have a real possibility of dying. I guess so. Jesus. <laughs> My attention is refocused as her, she thumbs through her few pages, skimming through their contents. Such casual interest in the subject matter. It's clear by now she won't be out of any help. I'm guessing you're not too interested in this stuff. Screw math. It's boring as hell. <laughs> she puts the book back in front of me with indifference. Her eyes move towards the notebook that I've been working on and practice equations on. Wait, you're actually able to work that stuff out? Yeah. Wow, I've never talked to a computer with legs before. Thanks, I think. At least I'm doing better in this than history. I think it's worth just asking that librarian for help. I heard she's shooting for uni. Uh, Yuko? Maybe. I don't know what she wants to study, though. Probably books, English, history, one of those two, I'm sure. <laughs> so, what about you? Got anything you're thinking of doing after you graduate? Me? Nah, not really. Just enjoy it while it lasts. <clears throat> she looks a little awkward when asked about her future, and absentmindedly rubs her left forearm. Kind of want to ask her about it, but I don't think I know her well enough to do so. The conversation peters out, and I lean back in my chair, giving up the prospect of studying. 
Miki notices my tired expression and looks oddly serious. Thinking about Hanako? Since that obvious. You've been all you've been doing is glancing at her seat. You've been pretty quiet. Not too hard to connect the dots. I'm just worried about her. Yeah, I can see why you would be. She can get weird sometimes. She sounds put off, but I can't blame her. Hanako was a hard person to interact with before she warmed up to me. Even with Lily around to help, I haven't known her to that long either. Some of her habits would still be unknown to me. <clears throat> My face becomes troubled. If I hadn't developed feelings for her, this would have been at least a little easier to deal with. Ah, <laughs> I mean, no offense. She isn't a bad person. I know that much. I know. I didn't take it that way. It's just harder to deal with when, well, you know, you have feelings for someone. Yeah, <clears throat> can imagine that. It's hard to forget something like that ever happened to her during class, too. I wish she hadn't reminded me of that. <laughs> she has just confirmed that it was clearly noticed by the others in the room as well. Come on, don't get that down. She's done this before. You just gotta wait it out. She locks herself in her room and acts like an empty husk of a person for a sizable amount of time. Ever since she's entered Yamaku, if not before then as well. And I'm not surprised to be concerned about that. Well, I might think that, but there's nothing I can do. I can't force her to come out. And she does see a therapist. So it's not like she isn't getting any help for her issues. It was just natural to think that way when you're so powerless to help someone. It's just the way she is, and you've got to deal with it. As I mull things over, I notice a movement out of the corner of my eye. I glance to see who it is. I ended up doing a double take. Huh, it's Hanako. Whoa. <laughs> She's like off-brand Hanako, this one. She looks like Hanako level one. Or like level two. This is like Hanako after she grows up and grows some confidence. <laughs> This is Hanako level one. Sure enough, it's Hanako. She walks through the door, just as she would any normal school day, and begins to move towards her seat in the usual silent and humble manner. She looks at me for a moment before blushing and looking away in embarrassment, which makes me realize that I was staring at her. I feel sorry for that, but not doing it is just hard after all that's happened. The girl sitting on my desk looks to me, grinning. See, your sweetheart's back already, what I tell ya. You be quiet. <laughs> Might only be as a joke, but it's close enough to home to make me realize it makes me quite uncomfortable. As we talk, someone calls Miki's name from the door. She jumps down from her vantage point on my desk before turning to me. Gotta go, Hisao. I'm gonna eat some time, will ya? Fine, I will. See ya. She gives a casual salute before jogging over to the door. I wonder if she saluted with her non-hand. That'd be really funny. <laughs> when her male student in a gym uniform is waiting for her, probably someone from the track and field club. Seizing the opportunity, I get up and make my way to Hanako's desk. Hello. Hi, Hanako. What's up? N nothing. <laughs> Maybe talking to her this soon after she came back to class was a bad move. Want to come with me and grab something from the cafeteria? I'm pretty hungry. But I thought you were studying. Studying can wait. Turning up for class after all this time must have taken some courage for Hanako. So at least I can do is stay with her. That's just the way she is, and you have to deal with it, is the way Miki, and probably the class as a whole, views Hanako. I can do more for her, though. I want to do more for her. Well, after being distracted by Miki, I don't think I'm going to get any work done. Come on, let's go. She hesitates, but eventually gets up and joins me as we begin walking. These may be small steps for her, but the fact that she's finally out of her room, out of her violation, lifts a large weight off my shoulders. <clears throat> Volition, sorry. She just 